All right, guys, so here I'm going to show you how to start rigging a big fat mech. This is one that I'm working on for an animated short, but I've handed it over to my basic rigging class. We're going to talk about parenting order, getting things in the right place, and to play with some of the parameters and so forth. I'll also post on our group um, how to uh, end cloth animate. There's part one I did in class. Part two will be the video I'm going to post later this week. All right, so you can see we have our mecha. There's a lot of pieces. So first up, I'm going to show you a little bit of the organization that you got to look out for. And secondly, we'll talk about how to add stuff like a fractal in an object or an, an item in or on a rig. So number one thing you need to look out for, when you look at this guy, we'll notice that we have ro um, rotation on the shoulder, and this is going to be texture driven inside. But what I want you guys to do is break this up a little bit more so we get a little more believability because right now if I rotate that, it's going to push those pieces right out of there. So what we can do to make things a little bit easier on us, I'm going to go to faces here. I'm going to grab this guy and I'm going to detach or extract that geo. And we'll go to my custom tab real quick and we'll do modify center pivot on that object. There we go. And I'll do the same thing on this guy too. So what I'm doing is I'm separating the joints here so that it logically moves like it should. Oh, control C. Deselect that for a second. I have a mirror tool on. I've been modeling on other objects and things. Double check my stuff and we'll go to extract again. Go to the object and I'll go to my center pivot. There we go. So now we have um, two different objects here. And these guys can be a constant. What you can do is you can now parent them or parent constrain them on this particular object. So what we'll want to do is um, we're going to put a controller here and I'll show you how to handle this joint because he can get tricky if you think about it. Let's grab all these pieces together. There we go. I'm going to do control D so you can see how this works. Let me hit the W key and I wanted to address this because this guy's kind of important because we need his arm to lift up a little bit as well as rotate. So you want to eventually have a bone in this particular area. And we'll do one generically here on our guy. And uh, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's go to animation and get a joint tool. So I'll create a, a bone here, and we'll create a bone here, and uh, we'll just put an erroneous bone here. Now, when it comes to arms and making them, you want to make sure that and on a robot, everything's going to be parented pretty much. Um, there will be some rigid bind, which you saw my video on mechanical rigging, which talks about rigid bind. Let me pull, go ahead and put x-ray joints here so we can see it. But what we're going to do is we want this shoulder to rotate one way. So we want it to be able to rotate this way to move the arm up and down. Oh, it looks like I have a little piece I missed. My bad for that. And no one cares because no one will see it. So let's go and get rid of that real quick. And you want the arm to rotate in a, another lateral motion to be able to... Um, move things around. So we'll have it here rotating, but we'll also have it so that it rotates around each other. So we can actually have it so it rotates this way. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to grab this guy and I'm going to, uh, let me grab the geo first, and I'll grab shift select the bone and hit P. And then next thing I'm going to grab is these guys. Now these guys are a constant. They're going to rotate around when this guy rotates this way. But I don't want it to rotate when he goes up and down. So they need to stand alone. They need to be by themselves, but there needs to be another controller that controls it. So let's go and make a controller real quick. The W key. Keep my finger the V key. There we go. Let me rotate him into place. Keep my finger on the J key. Now, you gotta be careful when you keep your finger on the J key too long. Maya uh, has a bug and it will turn on all your discrete rotates, even in your extrudes, which is a pain in the butt. 
All right, so I have a controller here. Let's go and freeze these transforms real quick. Transforms are frozen. And uh, now we know that this bone is in charge of this guy. So I'm constantly going to get a rotate. And if I parent the rest of the arm underneath these bones on the end, we'll keep that rotate consistent. I probably need to center my pivot a little bit. It's a little off. And the bone's probably a little bit off. So you just got to make sure your bone is centered. And uh, let me put this back for a second. To solve that problem, though, we can go in here and move my pivot on my controller a little bit down and back. So let's look at our side view. And we're going to line up our controller to be right here. I can refreeze it if I need to. Right in the middle. So when he rotates, we keep this constant. Unfortunately, it's going to undulate a little bit. So let's actually unparent it temporarily here and let's put this bone in the right spot there we go right smack dab in the middle so uh, we have our controller or actually our geo shift select our bone and I'm gonna hit P now with him there now we could probably snap him a little bit tighter but I'm gonna leave it for now we can now see when we rotate it's a little more precise. See that right there? So you do got to be careful of that. I just missed that real quick. So keep your stuff right in the middle of that joint. So we got our controller here. Let's go and freeze these transforms one more time. And he's going to control our lateral up and down movement. Now we can make another one which controls the spin movement. So let's do control D, duplicate, keep my finger on the J key. And rotate this way and I'm going to increase his size a little bit because he's going to be hard he'll get lost in the arm if I'm not careful and if I want to make him a little bit more distinct we can make him look more like a diamond and that way he doesn't get lost if we need to uh, change him a little bit And I'll change his overall scale so it isn't too redonkulous. So we have two controllers. We have one that's going to control a rotation. And let's go and do a parent constraint real quick. So it's parent then child. It's reverse of regular parenting. Constraint. Switch the animation real quick. And parent constraint. Maintain offset on. Add. This will control our back and forth, or I should say, up and down. And then this guy will control our overall rotation. Now this guy can be set back farther. So when he rotates, it's, it's going to control the whole system. So we got this guy here. Now unfortunately, if we do do that, the thing you don't want to run into, you don't want to run into, is messing this guy up. Because we see he, he's parent constraint to this particular joint. So I'm going to go through this and you're going to watch my order of operations. So if we grab this guy, you have to understand this theory or how this works. Very lots of logic when it comes to uh, setting up a mech. So if I got this guy here, let's go and freeze his transforms. Modify, freeze transforms. And we want him to control logically the whole system to rotate. We're going to have to grab these dudes and put them in the right appropriate area. So I'm going to grab him and him and I'm going to parent them back a joint. We're going to hit P so they're underneath him. So now the reason why I did that, so now this is isolated. This is only here. Nothing else. But this guy is going to control the whole shebang. So we're going to grab him, shift select the root, and we're going to do a parent constraint. We're going to, I'm going to show you a little bit of the conflict that can happen so you got to be aware of it. And hit add. And sometimes I do this in my lectures on purpose so you can see where your problems may lie. Like you just purposely break stuff so you can understand why this stuff is important because people get confused. So now you'll see we're rotating, but you'll notice we're not bringing the whole thing with us, right? See that right there? And the reason why is because he's hard parented and this is parent constraint. And um, hard parenting will always over ride any parent constraint 
um, especially if the order of operations is one before the other. So we're seeing here that the hard parenting is keeping us from grabbing the whole thing because we really want to grab the whole thing and that parent constraint is keeping him locked down. So to be able to solve this problem, we can use the group method to get this to work. So let me go back a few steps because we've got to undo what we did. All right. And uh, you'll notice if I grab this and rotate it, it's still not going to work because it's locked down underneath this guy. So let's go in. I'm going to control D. I love uh, um, using parent constraints. I can just control D. I don't have to have any consequences that all occur. So what we're going to do is I'm going to um, keep him on the side. We'll maybe use him later on for another lecture. Um, but we're going to keep this guy here. And we can do an SDK so that this guy rotates. And then we also have our own free floating movement. So let's go ahead and set this up so that he does a full rotation. We see there's the parenting. So we're going to put him underneath here and hit P. So now we can move this whole thing. Pretty cool. So with that whole thing moved, we also need to make sure that this guy here can still rotate. So we've watched our order of operations. We did things different, so we put him in first. This guy in control of the whole bone system. Parented this guy underneath this guy here. So now we can bring him in. Keep my finger on the V key. And I'm going to snap him back to where he was. Modify. Freezer transforms. And we're now going to attempt to put this guy under parent constraint and then put him underneath here. But let's first parent him because Maya likes hard parenting and always will look at bones and IK first before anything else. Let's look and put him underneath here, hard parent him first. So he's, we know he's hard parented under this guy. So that when we rotate the whole thing, the whole thing's coming together. Now before I do that, I'm going to make sure my controller, make sure I follow my earlier advice. My controller member needs to be in the center here. So let's double check. Is he in the center? It's kind of close. That's why he's a little bit lopsided right now. Keep my finger here and just I'm gonna eyeball that just for now, for time's sake. All right, freeze it one more time. There we go. So we're gonna parent him underneath our controller here. Hit P, and then we're going to parent constraint the joint. Maintain offset on. Hit add underneath that. So now, notice this is a lot easier to work with. Now, we can do the full rotation of the arm. And then we still have our isolated movement here. See that right there? This is why order of operations is really important. And you're going to find that problem a lot when it comes to mechanical rigging. So I just did things reversed. I put in my main controller first. And then my main controller, then I attach this guy. Because what happens is parent constraint, if you put it in first, will actually conflict with your hard parenting. This is what I always tell you guys in class, and you guys are all, that's nice, Sean. And then all of a sudden something explodes, and you're like, why? Oh my god, look at my whole rig. So this is a way to fix that. Put in your hard parenting first, and then from here you can do your um, parent constraint. And you have full control here. So I have full movement of that joint. But I can still go in here, grab this guy, and rotate that so it looks like an actual arm. All right, pretty cool. That's about it for this one. The next one we'll talk about fractal movement. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about parenting order because when it comes to shoulders, that can be tricky. But believe it or not, if you just do the hard or the main controller for that shoulder rotation in first, then you can put in the secondary. That's about it.